Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Well, listeners have been asking off and on for some time, so we decided to finally provide Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t shirt as well as a Great Detectives of Old Time Radio pullover hoodie. Each are available in five colors, though I think we'll mostly end up selling the black. The t shirt has Bogart on one side. Jack Webb on the other, and in the middle, another figure whose face is hidden in the shadow. It's a great design, and if you know a fan of the program, makes a great Christmas gift, you can pick it up at t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. All orders must be placed by December 5th. That's t-shirt.greatdetectives.net, available for a limited time. Also, over at greatdetectives.net this weekend... Check out my review of The Last Detective Series 2. And you can get all of my reviews automatically delivered to your Kindle. And you can try that service out free for two weeks. Just search for The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio in the Kindle Store. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Dragnet. The original air date? The original air date, December the 7th, 1952. And this one is The Big Mole. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. A string of store burglaries takes place in your city. The thieves work at night. They leave no physical evidence behind. Your job, get them. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, January 23rd. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Wisdom. My name's Friday. We were on our way out from the office, and it was 10.36 a.m. when we got to the corner of Constance and Westlake, Nichols Dry Goods Store. Yes? Something I can do for you, gentlemen? Yes, ma'am. We're police officers. Oh, yes, about the robbery. Yes, ma'am. Are you Gladys Nichols? Yes, I am. I'm the owner. I found out that the safe had been robbed. I think you mean your safe was burgled, Mrs. Nichols. What? Well, your safe, it's a technical term. We refer to it as having been burgled, not robbed. Burgled. Yeah. Robbed. They took the money out of it. Well, you see, ma'am, a lot of people make that same mistake. A, a safe is burgled and a man is robbed. Oh, yeah. Well, I came in this morning. I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. My name's Friday. This is my partner, Frank Smith. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. I do. Like I said, I'm Gladys Nichols. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you just tell us what happened here. Oh, sure. Well, I came in this morning, 8.30, just like I always do. Been doing the same thing for the past 10 years. Eight years at the old location. Always opened exactly 8.30 on the dot. Yes, ma'am. Miss... Miss Nichols. I took my maiden name when my husband died. I'm sorry. Go right ahead, please. Oh, sure. I came in at 8.30 this morning, opened the door, and came on in. Everything looked just like it should have. I hung up my coat, then I rolled up the shade on the front window. After that, I opened the safe, and that's when I knew that I'd been robbed, uh, burgled. That's right, ma'am. I could tell it right away. Safe was empty. Not a bit of money left. Cleaned it right out. Do you know how much money there was in the safe, uh, Miss Nichols? Oh, Yes. $423.76. I know exactly. Yes, ma'am. Can't understand it either. It should have gone off. should have worked. Can't understand why it didn't. What's that, ma'am? Burglar alarm. Oh. Yes, not a peep out of it. Nothing. The man that sold it to me said that if anybody so much as looked at something and thought about stealing it, the alarm would go off. But like I said, not a peep. Oh, I wonder if you'd excuse me for a minute. There's Mrs. Johnson, old customer. Yes, ma'am. It won't take a minute. You, ma'am. Good morning, Vera. Morning, Gladys. I want a pattern and some material. All right. What pattern do you want? 
Oh, I was over to the Palm Quits the other night. Barbara made some of the cutest pillows I ever saw. Looked like pieces of fruit. Uh, you know, watermelon strawberries. Oh, yeah, I know the ones you mean. She said she saw them in a magazine. Sent for the pattern, but I thought if anybody had had it, you'd be the one. Have you? Sure. It's new. I just got it in a couple of days ago. I guess you heard about my being burgled. No. Really? Sure, last night. Uh, those two gentlemen back there from the police come in to talk to me about it. And you were really robbed? Uh, burgled, Vera. Safe is burgled. A man is robbed. Oh. Now, is this the pattern you want? Yes, that's the one. See there? I want to make the slice of watermelon and the strawberry. Think they look real nice on the bench in the parlor. Oh, yes. Yes, they sure would. Faye saw those things. Said she wanted to make some. You see them, Joe? No, no, I never have. They're real nice. Probably not too comfortable, but they sure look pretty. Uh, How much material do I need for just the two? I'm not sure. I have to look at the pattern. Do you want just the melon slice and the strawberry, that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well... For the melon, you need, let's see. Uh, you want it out of cloth or plastic? What? Cloth or plastic. You can make them out of either. Uh, cloth, I think. Yeah. Faye's going to use plastic. It's better for the kids. Yeah. You'll need three quarters of a yard of red and a quarter yard of green felt for the hull and the stem. Uh, that's for the strawberry. And then for the melon, you'll need a half a yard of white. A half a yard of pink and a half a yard of green. All right. Well, how about embroidery cotton? You'll need four skeins of the six-strand black. Well, I have plenty of that. Well, I'll measure it out for you. Sure had some excitement around here this morning. All those policemen running around looking for fingerprints and clues was real excitement. Mm-hmm. They caught the man yet? No. That's what those two men are here for now. Want to ask me some questions. Certainly don't look like policemen. Now, why do you say that? Well, you know, they don't look anything like they do in the movies. Never do. Now, you will need some muslin for this, too. You want to get it now? No, I, I'll pick it up later. Got to get some batting, too. All right. That's the stuff that gives Faye trouble. What? Batting. You know, the stuff you put inside the pillows? Faye always has trouble with it. Stuff always creeps down to one end of the pillow. You got one real fat end, and the other one just hasn't got anything in it. Kind of uncomfortable when you sit on it. Yeah. Just put that on the bill, will you, Gladys? Oh, you betcha. Sure hope you get the burglary all straightened out. Oh, I know they will. Thanks for coming in. Now then, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Well, that's all right, ma'am. Uh, about that burglar alarm. Yes? Well, about the switch. Are you sure you turned it on when you left the shop? Sure. You just bet I did. I always do. Right after I pull the shade down, I always switch on the system. It's supposed to ring when anybody tries to get into the place. Didn't work this time. Not even a peep. Well, now you say this time. Do you mean that something like this happened before? Oh, no. No, just a figure of speech. No. Never been anything like this before. Oh, I see. Did you notice anything disturbed in the place when you came in? Anything that made you think something might be wrong? No, not a thing. Came in, rolled up the shade, and then opened the safe. That's the first I knew about it. Somebody opened it up. Must have known the combination. Just opened it up and took the money. Well, does anyone else have a key to your front door here? Anyone besides yourself, I mean? Well, there's Alan. Alan? Yes, Alan Hoffman. He comes in, straightens up for me. He's a decorator. Mm -hmm. Or at least he's trying to be one. He likes to come in and putter with the material. He works in some sort of store during the day, and then he comes in here in the evenings and works with the material. You know, tries out different things. Yes, ma'am. Does he have the combination to your safe? Oh, no. I'm the only one who has that. Do you know if he was in here last night? No, no, I don't. But I know that Alan wouldn't do a thing like this. I'm sure of that. How is it you let this Alan have a key to the place, ma'am? Let him have the run of the place when you're not here. Oh, well, I've known Alan for a long time. I knew his mother. We've always been good friends. Once in a while, he gets a commission to a house, and he always gets the material he needs from me. Well, he's awfully nice. You'd like it. Yes, ma'am. You know where we can get in touch with this Mr. Hoffman? Sure, I can give you his address. Lives over on 9th. Got a real cute place, all modern and all. He does those uh, mobiles. You know those things made out of wire and plastic, hangs from the ceiling? Just hang there and go round and around. It's a new art form. Yes, ma'am. I don't understand them myself, but I guess there are a lot of people who do. Yeah. Are you insured against theft, ma'am? I beg your pardon? Do you have any insurance against theft? Sure, I have insurance. By golly, that's the first time I thought about it. I always thought that it was kind of a waste of money. Sure glad I have it now. This whole thing won't cost me a cent. Well, now, outside of this Hoffman... Do you hire anyone else in the store here? No. Well, I don't pay Alan anything. He just comes in and putters. 
There's no need for anyone else in the store. I have a man come in once in a while to wash the front windows, but no one's steady. Has there been anyone around regularly? Anyone who'd be in a position to learn the combination of the safe, ma'am? Find out where the switch to the burglar alarm is? No. No, not that I can think of. Of course, most of my customers are pretty regular, come in all the time, but I'm pretty sure that none of them would do a thing like this. What if you could give us a list of the people who come in regularly, Miss Nichols? Sure, I can. But I don't want you to go around bothering them, asking a lot of questions, causing embarrassment. I just won't have it. Money just isn't that important. It doesn't make that much difference, especially since I'm insured. Well, we won't embarrass anyone. It's just that we'd like to have the list if we could. Oh, well, all right. What time did you close the store last night, Miss Nichols? 6.10. Same as always. Did you lock the store yourself? Yes, sir, I did. Did you notice anyone loitering around outside? Anyone who might have looked a little unusual, like they were waiting for you to leave? No, I don't think so. If there was anyone, I didn't notice them. Did you leave any sort of a light burning in the place? I beg your pardon? Well, a night light. Do you leave one burning when you close up? Sure, sure. That lamp on the counter, old coffee grinder. I leave that on. Has a 150-watt bulb. Throws a lot of light. Of course, you can't see anything from the street when I close up. Just a lot of shadows. I beg your pardon? Well, I pull the shade down when I leave. Once I had some material fade that was in the window. Since then, I pull the shade down. When it's down, you can't see inside in the street at all. Uh-huh. Oh, say, if you don't mind, I'd like to make a phone call. Of course, ma'am. I want to call those people and tell them what I think of them. They're going to have to make good on that guarantee. Who's that, ma'am? Burglar alarm people. Thing didn't work at all. Not even a peep. Eleven eighteen a.m. Frank and I checked by the crime lab to see if they'd been able to come up with any physical evidence from the scene of the burglary. As in the previous cases, there was nothing to work on. For the past month, a series of burglaries had been taking place in the same one-block area. The M.O. in every instance was the same. Somehow, the doors to the shops were being unlocked, the safes rifled, and then closed up again. In those stores where there wasn't a safe, merchandise was stolen. In all of the burglaries, whoever was responsible for them got away without leaving a trace of physical evidence behind. Store employees were interrogated, owners were questioned. None of them could give us any leads. The M.O. had been run through the stats office, but they couldn't help us. Stakeouts had been placed on the stores. Extra men were sent out from Metro Division to patrol the streets. The men saw nothing, but the burglaries continued. The thief or thieves seemed to know just what stores were under surveillance and seemed to keep clear of them. Wednesday, 12.14 p.m. We ran the name Alan Hoffman through R&I, but we got no make. Frank and I drove out to his home address on 9th Street. He met us at the door and asked us in. I'm doing some work back here. Mind if I go on with it? No, sir. You go right ahead. Right back here, Sun Porch. I uh, got a commission to do a place. I'm working on some mobiles for it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I think I'll call it Doves at Sunrise. Sit down. Any place. Yeah, thanks. Just a couple questions we'd like to ask you, Hoffman. Sure, what about? Were you in Miss Nichols' shop last night? No, why? Can you tell us where you were last night? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I went to an exhibition of mobile, a place down on Pico. A friend of mine had a one-man show. Great ideas. Bad color, but great idea. You prove you were there? Sure, if I have to. What's this all about, anyway? I understand you have a key to the shop, is that right? Yeah, yeah, Gladys gave it to me. I go down there and check the material, get ideas for decorating. Where do you work, Mr. Hoffman? Right now in a store out on Beverly Antique Shop. I want to go in business for myself, interior decoration. I've been working for it a long time. A couple of more good commissions, I'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You work at night down there very often? You mean at Gladys's? Yeah, that's right. Maybe a couple of times a week. What time do you usually get there? It depends on what I'm doing before. Usually I have dinner, then go by. Well, what's this all about, anyway? Something wrong? Well, you probably know there have been several burglaries down in that area lately. Yeah, I heard about them. You figure I had something to do with them, is that it? Well, we're trying to find out who's responsible for them. Well, it isn't me. You ever notice anyone around the place when you were there at night? No, not that I remember. Uh, hand me that piece of balsa, will you? This wood here? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, here you are. Thanks. No, I've never noticed anyone around there. What time do you finish up at the shop there? Sometimes late as two, maybe three in the morning. Uh-huh. Miss Nichols tell you where the burglar alarm switch is? Sure, I know. Couldn't move around the place without knowing about it. Have half the police force there if that thing ever went off. You got any idea as to how that safe could be opened by someone other than Miss Nichols? No. no she's so touchy about that safe she... Never let anyone get near her when she's opening. Even after she finishes the combination, she twirls a dial so you can't tell what number she stopped on. You've looked, have you? No. I don't like what you're trying to say. Well, we're not trying to say anything, Hoffman. Well, you imply that I might try to knock over that safe. No, we didn't say that. You said the same thing. 
Asking me if I'd try to see the combination. Well, I'll just take it easy, Hoffman. If you haven't done anything, you've got nothing to be afraid of. Mm, got nothing to be afraid of. I just don't like your remarks, that's all. You ever been arrested? Hmm? I say you ever been arrested. Oh, no, no. A couple of tickets for running red lights, that's all. And give us the address of the place where you were last night? Yeah, I suppose so. You guys really think I had something to do with this, huh? We've got to check everybody out, Hoffman. You came up on the list. Well, that's all it is, huh? That's all it is. Well, I'll give you the address. You can check there. I'll tell you, I was there till about 3.30 this morning, and then I well, went out to get something to eat. I came home about 5 this morning, went right to bed. Anybody see you come in? No, I don't think so. You guys figure it might be an inside job, these burglars? Looks like it might be, yeah. Well, that's the way I've got it figured. From what Gladys tells me, it's almost got to be. Is that right? Sure. Well, hand me that piece of red plastic, will you? The what? A piece of red plastic. This here? Yeah, that one. Oh. There you are. Thanks. Oh, sure, it's got to be somebody who knows all about the stores. You know, when to hit the safes, when not to. The way they walk into the places, no marks on the doors, nothing broken. You seem to know quite a bit about the burglaries. Well, you know, I heard about them, talked to Gladys. Looks like an inside job to me. Uh, say, officer. Yeah? Uh, would you hand me one of those swivels there in the box? Where? Here? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks. Yeah. Now, uh... Clip it on here and hang this thing. You just hang it up like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Finished. Balance is good. Good movement. Huh. Doves at sunrise. Is that all it does? Just hang there? Yeah. Well, what do you think of it? Of course, it isn't as good as war recumbent, but it gets the feeling across, don't you think? Yeah, sure does. Doves at sunrise, huh? Yeah, doves at sunrise. How about that? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, sure. Joe. This is Hoffman. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You get it? Uh, who? What? Oh. Doves at sunrise. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Friday. Yeah. It's your office. Oh, thanks, Hoffman. Hello. Oh, yeah, Captain. Mm hmm No, we're here now. Yeah. Yeah, well, he seems to. Yeah, who? All right, we'll be right in. All right, we got a call to make. What? Over on Pico? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, right after that. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Wisdom? Yeah, he wants to see us. Yeah? We'll probably want to talk to you later, Mr. Hoffman. We can reach you at this number, is that right? Yeah, either here or at the shop. If I'm not at either, Gladys knows where I am. All right, I wonder if you could give us the address and the phone number of the place where you were last night. Sure. Yeah. I've got a piece of paper here someplace. You never can find anything when you want it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. You, uh, you got to go out there, huh? You can't take my word for it. That isn't the point, Mr. Hoffman. We can't take anybody's word for it. If we don't know it, we got to check it out, see? Mm -hmm. I suppose so. Oh, here you are. Ask for Rudy. Uh, he's the one who had the exhibition. He'll tell you. Uh, Rudy, is that it? Yes, that's right. I was with him all evening. He'll tell you. Okay, thanks, Hoffman. Oh, um, say, uh, yeah. I wonder if you could leave me your card and phone number. Yeah, sure. Here you are. Uh, thank you. I'd like to give you a call. Sir? I'm holding my own show of mobiles. like to have you two guys there. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. You bet. I'll be calling you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. What'd the captain want, Joe? Oh, he's raising the roof. Says he just got a call from the corner pocket. They're leaning all over him. Yeah? Says he's tired of answering questions. Says we better come up with some of the answers for him. Twelve fifty-eight a.m. Frank and I drove over to check on Alan Hoffman's alibi. We talked to Rudy Nixon. He told us that Hoffman had been with him until around 4.30 that morning. At that time, Nixon had dropped Hoffman off at his apartment. We drove back to the office and ran the name Rudy Nixon through r and but we got no make on anyone answering his description. 5.45 p.m., Frank and I reported for stakeout duty. The night went slow and we came up with nothing. The next morning at 8.16 a.m., we checked back into the office. You know, as soon as we get this thing over with, I'm going to sleep a week. Oh, man, you got company. I'm going to tell Faye to send the kids out of town, and if anybody calls me, tell them I just left for Hindustan by fast freight. Well, how'd it go? Nothing, Skipper. Sat there all night, not a thing. 
How about the other guys? Anything from them? No, I just checked with Metro. None of their cars saw anything. The other men out there came in with the same. I'll get it. Burglary wisdom. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Well, what time was that? Right, we'll send a couple of men right out. Here's the address. I hit again. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. Thursday, January 24th, 8.52 a.m. Frank and I drove out to see the latest victim of the burglars. The crew from the crime lab arrived and went over the place. The M.O. was exactly the same as in the previous thefts. The front door had been unlocked, the safe had been opened, the contents taken, and then the safe closed. There was no physical evidence. However, on one point, the thief had varied his method of operation. The latest victim was the owner of a radio and television store. A check of his stock showed us that an expensive record player and a large stock of records were missing. We checked Metro Division, but they told us that none of their cars had reported seeing anyone on the streets carrying anything that fitted the description of the missing merchandise. The serial number of the set was given to us, and a local and an APB was gotten out on it. We talked to Lieutenant Stevens at Metro, and he agreed to double the number of cars cruising in the area that night. Three more teams of men from burglary were assigned to the stakeout detail. 6.02 p.m. Frank and I checked in for duty. Nothing happened. Two days passed. Still no new leads. All employees of the stores that were victimized were checked and rechecked. Nothing. Saturday, January 26th, Frank and I were assigned to a toy shop in the middle of the block. We waited. 8 p.m., 9, 10.30 p.m. Nothing. Oh, boy, I'm stiff. Yeah. Joe? Mm-hmm. What time you got? 10.46. Uh, I sure wish I could have a smoke. Yeah? I wonder if he's going to show what do you think? I don't know. It's been a long time. 11 o'clock. We waited. From time to time, we could see the lights of the undercover car go by the front entrance. Midnight. 12.30. Still nothing. Joe? Hmm? Want a piece of this candy bar? No, I'm not hungry. Sure you don't want some? No. I don't know. We've been in every store in this block. Past months, I don't think the guy's gonna show. No. This guy's stale? Wait a minute. What? What's that? Somebody's like moving something. Yeah, sounds like a ventilator, doesn't it? Hey. Wait a minute, hold it. Hey, look, see the ventilator on the far wall? Where? Is it moving? Yeah, he's got somebody's coming out of there, see? Going for the burglar alarm. See, look at that. What'd he do? Snapped off the burglar alarm. Oh. He's at the safe. Yeah. He's got it open. Come on, let's take him. All right, mister, hold it right there. Watch it, Joe. He's going for the ventilator. I see him. Come on. You see him? No. He's up in there somewhere. Yeah. All right, come on out of there, mister. You see him? No, I don't think so. Come on out of there, you. There he is, Joe. Gun flash. Yeah, I see him. All right, come on, mister. Throw that gun out here. Get out of here, cop. You come back here, I'll kill you. You got no place to go up there. Now, come on, give it up. I'm telling you, you come back here, I'll kill you. I will. I'm warning you, I'll kill you. Wait a minute. Wait. Don't shoot anymore. Please, don't shoot anymore. Please. I quit. Please. All right, throw that gun out here. Come on. All right. There it is. There it is. You got it. Now, don't shoot anymore, huh? Please, All right, come on out of there. Anymore. Come on out of there. What do you think? You gonna come out of there? Come on, easy. Smoky in here. It's kind of a tight squeeze in it. 
slippery too. Looks like he's got some kind of a room up there. Can you see? Okay, here we are. Hey, look at this. He's got himself a room. Yeah. Dug it right out of the earth here. All right, come on. Come out from behind that crate. All right. Get your hands behind your head. I'm, I'm doing like you say. See, I got my hands just like you said. I, I quit. All right, I can shake them down. Yeah. Come Stand on. Stand still. Put your hands against the wall. Yeah, he's clean, Joe. Now, what is all this in here? Where I live. All right, we'll take a look. How about this, Joe? This room must be 20 feet square. Mm-hmm. This all the stuff you've stolen? Yeah, most of it. What's your name? Warwick. Dan Warwick. Really had you guys going, didn't I? All right, let's go. Really had you. Couldn't figure it out. I used to watch you sit in the vents and watch you. Used to laugh how hard you were trying. Really had you going. Couldn't figure it out. Yeah, sure. Come on, now let's go. <laughs> really had you going. You never would have found me. Could have stayed here for years. Dug this room myself, every bit of it, all by myself. Stayed here when you guys were around, except when I watched you, you and the others. Couldn't figure out how I knew about the safes. Used to just sit there and watch them. Watch them open the things. Simple once you know how. Really had you going, all of you. I bet you did. Running around in circles. Real fun. Yeah, well, we knew where we were going. The story you have just heard was true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On May 17th, trial was held in Department 89, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Friends, it's getting a little closer to Christmas, and there's a man right near you who has a lot of fine gift ideas. Daniel Robert Warwick was tried and convicted of burglary in the first degree, five counts. Said counts to run consecutively. He received his sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next seven years of bigger and bigger enrollments, America's grade schools will need nearly a quarter of a million extra teachers besides those to fill normal vacancies. Education holds America's future, perhaps your future. Just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the Office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Gwen Delano, Paul Richards. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, more adventure with Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, on NBC. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series, oh, and a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Another story in which we get a clever crook. But a reminder that even a clever crook f has the odds against him. Because he's up against an entire police department. Which ultimately led to his downfall. Uh, and you can also hear a bit of the arrogance that leads to that as well. Continuing to boast at the people who have you in custody. Also, Frank Smith's lesson on the uh, rule of thumb for robbery and burglary was uh, pretty good. Uh, Frank Smith generally has a better sense for how people are, so I doubt he would have tried that if the uh, owner was all distraught. But it's a good lesson, and it's also good from a PR perspective. Because if it gets around the neighborhood that you were robbed... People are going to feel a little less safe in some cases going into the store. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Join us uh, back here tomorrow uh, due to our special. We have uh, video theater episodes back to back. And tomorrow, it's a television episode of Boston Blackie. 
You won't want to miss it. And then join us back here on Monday for Not Beat. And next Saturday, another episode of Dragnet. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.